Bienvenidos, Usham Deed, and welcome to another Cisco Networking Academy Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to take another look at how to solve part two, the user enters move from lab 4.1.6.13, where we're putting together an application to play tic-tac-toe. Now, at the very end of the part two video, you, you remember I commented, I looked at it and I said, you know, there's probably a more optimal way to do this, but we'll go ahead and go with the if l if structure. And as soon as I stopped the recording, I sat there and looked at it for a couple seconds and it hit me right square in the face. So we're gonna take a look at a more optimized way to solve this issue. Again, the code from the previous video, part two, is working code, but this is going to sort of clean things up and make it a little easier uh, in terms of the number of lines of code that we're gonna be dealing with. I'm gonna pick right up where we left off here. Now, remember, the code that we have right up to that point there is still gonna be legitimate code, right? We're gonna check to see if an integer is being provided. We're gonna do some explicit type conversion. We're gonna check to see if the integer that was entered is one through nine inclusive, and then we're going to go ahead and check to see if the space is already taken. So up to that point, we would know that the input is le legitimate, it's valid, and that the space that the user is trying to pick is not taken already. And so this would be a great time to do a nested for loop. And we saw this in the course with the nested for loops. And I think it was a very brief mention of it, but we did see it. And like I said, it wasn't until I hit, and it's Murphy's law, right? I click stop and I'm looking at the code and I'm like, you know what? I could have nested for loop this and it would have looked a lot nicer. So here's what it would look like. And I'm gonna use the terms that were provided in the description for the lab when they talked about break, or I'm sorry, board, and then row column. So I'm gonna say for row in range zero comma three. Now what's that range? Remember it's left inclusive, right exclusive in the range statement. So it's zero, one, and two. So that right there is gonna cover every row. Now I'm gonna come back and say for column in range zero comma three. And that covers every single column, one, two, or three. So if I scroll back up just a little bit here, take a look, zero, 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 one, zero, two, one, zero. And so this nested for loop structure is going to go through and we're going to check every single square until, and here's where we get down to if, right? Because we know we have valid input. We know we have input for a square that's not taken. So all I need to do now is iterate through each of the rows and columns. In other words, through each of the squares in the board until I can find if the board row and then column, L-U-M-N, is equal to, and we're gonna type cast the move back to a string because remember, in the board list, we have strings. And so what am I checking for here? I'm basically iterating through square one, square two, square three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, looking to see if the board matches or what, uh, what am I trying to say here? What value for that row and column, in other words, what value for the square is it equal to what the user entered in? Because when and if it does equal that, that is where we're simply gonna say board, row, column, gets capital O, right? Now, that is definitely an improvement in terms of conciseness, if that's even a word, uh, but in terms of optimization, this is much prettier and a little more, I guess you could argue, Pythonic than to work through the if l if. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with the if l if structure that we were working with there, building off of the beginning if up here, 
uh, if up here and then working through all the elifs. But I think you'd agree that what we have here is much, much nicer in terms of the con how concise it is. And so now the ultimate test, we're going to go through and let's check and see if this works. So we'll hit F5, we'll save it, we'll come over here. And uh, again, we know that it works if I don't put an, uh, uh, an integer in uh, we, or something I can convert to an integer. We know the range, and so I'm not going to walk through each of those. So let's check and see. Square one works like a champ. Let's hit uh, F5. Let's see if square two. And look at, uh, I'm sorry, I, I hit one. It did not take one. Let me see. For some reason, let's hit F5. And let me hit one. Did I enter one? Okay, I did. I'm so, Oh, I looked. It pushed it off the screen. I'm sorry. I looked up here and I was like, wait a second. The previous one didn't catch it, but this is displaying the board. So it worked there and it worked in square two. Let's check square three with F5. And we'll drop a th oops, sorry, we'll drop a three in here. And what happened there? All right, let's hit F5 again. And we'll type in three. It works. We'll hit F5. Sorry, hit F5. And we'll enter in four. And it works like a champ. And so again, probably going to work with all these. Let's check and see. Does it still catch that yes the square is taken so we'll move over to square six it drops the o in there f5 we'll come over here we'll go to seven and then eight and then nine oops sorry i hit f9 right there and then nine all right and so again i like this we're going to stick with this code here uh, and again, I apologize for kind of showing you a way to do it with the if, elif, but again, there's always more than one way to achieve things. And that's what I love about Linux. That's what I loved about Linux 30 years ago. And that's what I love about programming uh, in general, right? I love the bash shell. There's always more than one way that you can approach things. And sometimes it takes just simply like hammering it out one way to take a look at the code and to say, hey, there's gotta be a more optimal way to do this and then step away from it for a second maybe, or just take a look at it and try to figure out what might be a little more optimal in terms of solving the problem. And so again, I like these one, two, three, four lines of code, as opposed to all of those other if, l, if statements. And so hopefully you'll agree, but this is probably not the, this is not gonna be the solution that would be the most intuitive. You're prob you probably didn't look at it and think, oh, well, let me do nested for loops and work our way through. And maybe you did, but chances are you might have thought about it logically and like, oh, okay, well, if, you know, this square is equivalent to whatever the user entered in, then we'll work our way through that way. But I like this solution much better. And I wanted to make sure I put this out there, right? Because there's always more than one way to do things. And so this is going to wrap up sort of part 2A of the user entering a move. And I hope you like this method a little better than the first method. Uh, again, both are functional, both work. This is definitely a little more optimized. So thank you so much for watching. All the best of luck to you in your studies. And I hope to see you in the next video.